Um, Martha Bonetta had no designs on being a hero across the country, yet she is. Fauquier County is digging in its heels. They're messing with the wrong farmer, let me tell you this. Um, let me introduce my friend and my hero, Martha Bonetta. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today. Standing before you, all of you, and so many important people that are here is such a privilege and an honor. I couldn't possibly describe it or articulate it standing here now. But to be able to speak to you with Joel Salatin and so many of you here today is, is beyond anything I ever dreamed possible. And I thank you for that. I grew up in Mount Vernon, Virginia, on what we were told growing up was a part of George Washington's vast farmland. My mom always had a kitchen garden, a very small kitchen garden in our backyard, and the tomatoes and the vegetables were so good. And she would always say it was because of our soil. The soil was so rich. And she would say that it was because of George Washington's pigs that our vegetables tasted so good. So you see, it was ingrained in me from an early age to really love Virginia's rich farm history. And from an early age, it was my childhood dream to be a farmer. And I so much wanted to be a part of that history. Thank you. About six years ago, my childhood dream became a reality. Our family um, has the joy of caring for and watching our crops grow and the ability to work the land that I love. We started small, of course, because for economic reasons, that's what you do when you're working on a farm and starting a family farm. But every year, our family farm would grow, and we would learn, sometimes the hard way. And every day, we are thankful for the opportunity to connect to the land and to bring the community and the people to the land and to our special farm. There is something so powerfully and fundamentally Virginian about farming. There were farms, there were farms in Virginia before there was a United States of America. It's our heritage, and it's not just our economic heritage. It's our cultural heritage, and it's our historic heritage. But as any small farm family farm can tell you, Behind the joy, the wonder, and the magic of farming, and the aches and the pains at the end of the day, there is always, um, almost always a little bit of fear and worry. You try not to think about it, but it's always there. It's a battle. Every day is a battle. Just trying to cover the expenses of carrying the land and keeping the land and running a farm. Farmers worry about a lot of things. We worry about things like drought, bugs, tomato end rot. So there are worries there that we live with. It's part of being a farmer. I know firsthand how much pressure there is on our small family farms. And the truth is that if our family, if our family farms can't make ends meet, then we will lose them. And once you lose farmland as a community, and we all know this to be true, they're lost forever. So it's about supporting small businesses, which is something we hear and talk about a lot. But it's also supporting agriculture as a viable business and a way of life in Virginia. The Virginia Right to Farm Act is about making sure that the local regulations on our farms are reasonable and that the small family farmer is protected. That all sounds obvious and simple, right? But I can tell you from experience, it's not. There can be a lot of tension between the idea of farming and we all love to farm and we love the idea of going to our farms and we love to support them. But then there's the day-to-day -day reality of working a small family farm and keeping it alive. And so this bill introduced by Delegate Lingenfelter 
is about putting a little more detail into our common understanding of what farming practices are and to make sure that the intent of the Virginia Right to Farm Act makes its way into the practical reality of how local governments treat our small farms. There are a lot of practical things that farmers do to make ends meet, whether it's selling Christmas tree stands and mistletoe at Christmas time on tree farms, or whether it's selling a cold lemonade on a 100 degree hot summertime day at an at a apple orchard. These seem like little things, but they can be the difference between paying the bills and not paying the bills. But just as importantly, these are all good for the consumer too and to our community. And that, that helped create and sustain interest in our farms and in farming. This bill is about making sure that these little practices, these farming practices, have some minimal baseline protection that's common to all farms in Virginia. And that ro local regulation can't draft or enforce ordinances in any way that undercuts the purpose of the Virginia Right to Farm Act. I am so truly, deeply honored that this bill is called the Bonetta Bill. It's a blessing beyond words, but this bill is not just about our little farm. It's about all family farms, property rights, economic freedom, and the American dream. I have learned a lot from this experience. I have learned firsthand that mean people are alive and well. Amen. <laughs> But for every mean person, there's a village of concerned citizens, Virginians that love our small family farms, that have come to us and said, we support you, we believe in you, we want our small family farms to flourish and be viable. For this I am eternally grateful. We also know now what it's like to see our government actively support our small family farms too. words. It's truly, inadequate. There's, there, it's truly inadequate for me to express how grateful I am to Delegate Lingham Felter for bringing this bill forward. I know that I express and speak for so many the magnitude of that gratitude. It speaks to all Virginia farmers, property rights, and economic freedom. I ask you today to stand with me in support of my dream to be a Virginia farmer, the American dream. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you.